Hip dislocation. Hip dislocation can be either a simple dislocation or it can be a fracture dislocation which involves the posterior wall of the acetabulum or the femoral head. Dislocation of the hip can be two types. It can be a posterior dislocation, which is the most common type, or an anterior dislocation, which is rare. A position of the hip during the impact decides the injury. In posterior dislocation of the hip, which is the commonest type, the lower limb will be flexed, abducted, and internally rotated. Here is a normal position of the hip. Here is position of the hip after posterior dislocation. Here is a patient with posterior dislocation of the hip. You can see the internal rotation of the right lower extremity. Now we go to the anterior hip dislocation. It is rare. It could be superior anterior hip dislocation. The limb will be extended, abducted, and externally rotated. Here is a normal position of the hip. This is the hip position after anterior hip dislocation. This is an anterior inferior hip dislocation. They call it the obturator type. The extremity will be flexed, abducted, and externally rotated. Hip fractures are different than hip dislocation. Notice that the affected extremity is shortened and externally rotated with a hip fracture. This patient had a posterior hip dislocation. The affected extremity is internally rotated. After reduction of the affected hip, Notice that the rotation of the legs are similar. Hip dislocation of any type is an emergency. It must be reduced in less than six hours. And after reduction of the hip, get a CT scan. Although the X-ray is helpful, the CT scan clearly outlines the bony injury. Here is a pre-reduction CT scan showing a fracture dislocation of the femoral head. Check the CT scan for congruous reduction, for absence of fracture, for absence of marginal impaction in the acetabulum. You can find marginal impaction more common in posterior wall fractures. Marginal impaction can lead to instability. A displaced or comminuted posterior wall fracture could lead to arthritis later on. Make sure you have a good congruous reduction with no loose bodies or important fractures present. The size of the posterior wall fracture has an effect on the stability of the hip. If congruous reduction of the hip is not obtained, Perform open reduction urgently. Open reduction can be done through an anterior or posterior approach. Hip dislocation with or without associated fracture can cause complication, such as avascular necrosis. The risk of avascular necrosis depends on the interval between the injury and the reduction of the dislocation. Urgent reduction of hip dislocation is mandatory to avoid avascular necrosis and interruption of the blood supply which leads to collapse of the femoral head. Posterior hip dislocation can also cause sciatic nerve palsy. Reduce the hip and recheck the sciatic nerve. Always reduce the hip early. Close reduction should be done in less than 6 hours. When the injury occurs to the sciatic nerve due to the posterior hip dislocation, 
The common perineal nerve is the nerve that's usually affected, causing weakness and dorsiflexion of the ankle and loss of toe extension. Injury can occur in varying degrees of severity and it can be missed. Check for foot drop. Also, be aware that movement of the toes may be misleading. It may appear as dose deflection, however, this could be the result of plantar flexion of the toes. Documenting of the injury is important to avoid medical legal problems. Injury to the sciatic nerve usually occurs from the dislocation and not from the reduction of the hip. The longer the wait for the reduction, the more the patient is predisposed to sciatic nerve injury. The length of time a hip remains dislocated influences the incidence and the severity of a major sciatic nerve injury. Partial recovery of the sciatic nerve occurs in 60 to 70 percent of patients. The patient usually require an anti-foot drop splint to prevent equinus of the ankle. There is approximately 10% incidence of sciatic nerve palsy from posterior hip dislocation. Neurologic examination at the time of injury is usually difficult. However, it is extremely necessary. Check for the sensation on the top of the foot. In posterior dislocation of the hip, Always look for injuries in the knee, such as with a dash board injury. The force of the injury is usually transmitted from the knee to the hip. There may be an associated posterior crochet ligament injury or a meniscal tear. Examine the knee for injuries and you may need to get an MRI. In case of a high energy trauma, always look at the chest. There might be a tear of the aorta. Check for widening of the mediastinum on chest x-rays. There is a concern of deceleration injury involving the aorta. You may apply the ATLS protocol. More flexion, internal rotation, and abduction favors pure dislocation. Less flexion, internal rotation, and abduction favors fracture dislocation of the hip. Hip joint dislocation may be associated with a stabular fracture or femoral head fracture, which is called Pipkin fracture. In Pipkin fracture, as the femoral head dislocates, it hits the posterior wall of the stabulum and the head fractures. This might be different than in anterior hip dislocation which might cause impaction of the femoral head or indentation fractures. Classically, Pipkin fracture is a posterior dislocation of the hip and fracture of the femoral head. And these are the four types of Pipkin. Treatment of hip dislocation. You will do emergency closed reduction of the hip Within six hours, close reduction is done to avoid a vascular necrosis of the hip. Reduction of the hip joint and mobilization of the patient with protected weight-bearing crutches for four to six weeks. After closed reduction, when the patient has an associated fracture, assess the stability, especially if the fragment is not too large. The hip is usually stable if the fragment size of the stabulum is less than 20%. If it is more than 40%, the hip is unstable. Between 20 to 40% fragment size, the hip stability is undetermined.
When there is an associated establer fracture, the best method to assess the stability of the hip is by examination of the patient under general anesthesia utilizing fluoroscopy. Use the operator oblique view. The hip will be flexed, abducted, and add axial load. Check the medial clear space for opening. Opening means hip instability. If there is an irreducible isolated posterior dislocation, do emergency surgical treatment to reduce the hip. If there is an associated establer or femoral head fracture, you will do urgent close reduction of the hip dislocation followed by stabilization of either of the fractures if needed according to the protocol. Posterior hip dislocation with posterior wall fracture. You must assess the stability of the hip joint by examination under anesthesia after close reduction. After close reduction, if the dislocation is not congruent, do open reduction and fixation urgently. Here is an example of fixation of the establer fracture and here is an example of fixation of the Pipkin femoral head fracture. Thank you very much. I hope that was helpful.